Hi, everyone. And now, from Hulu, we have Under the Bridge. This show looks at the real-life horrific murder of a 14-year-old Canadian girl, Rena Varta, and the investigation into the group of teenagers accused of killing her. Riley Keough plays Rebecca Godfrey, the real-life novelist, whose book is the basis for the series, and we follow her as she tries to figure out what really happened alongside her childhood friend, Cam, who is now a police officer. Please join me in welcoming to the stage, starring as Cam, Oscar nominee, Lily Gladstone. <laughs> and creator and executive producer, Quinn Shepard. And showrunner and executive producer, Samir Mehta. Welcome, everyone. Before we get to talk about the show, let's take a look at a clip. There's danger everywhere. But danger had never looked quite like this before. This girl, Rena Ver, she's been missing for three days. That name, I saw something. What happened under the bridge? Can you keep a secret? You don't step foot in Victoria in 10 years. And you show up in the middle of my homicide investigation. I'm writing a book. People will tell me things they're not going to tell you. Girls are always missing. Big girls is what the cops call us. Like the lighters. Why do they call you that? Because we're disposable. is working inside them. Can't be. This is the tale of horror and wonder, of innocence and beauty, violence and sin. This story would haunt the island for years to come. It forever changed a fact young girls were the ones we were supposed to protect. Not be protected from. I want you to take me under the bridge. So we, we saw you there, Lily, as, as Cam, and your character goes through an incredible range of emotion throughout this series. You know, not only is she dealing with the horror of the murder and the responsibility as a police officer, but she's reuniting with Rebecca and she has history and there's a lot of pain in their past and then she doesn't know anything about her own origin story. Can you speak to your feelings when you first read the script and what made you really say, yes, I absolutely want to play this role? I was really intrigued by the opportunity to build and travel that arc because I feel like with a piece like this, um, with a piece like my last project that just did its thing, <laughs> um, true crime is such a fascinating genre and it has been for a long time. There's something that we're all so compelled by with these stories and I feel like a lot of times the human element of it, particularly the people who suffered the most, are the ones that get erased. The, the, the thing that happened to them becomes a sensationalized thing for the media. Um, and then it becomes something for consumption. And I feel like my last project did a beautiful job self-indicting in that regard, and I feel like this project was very, very thorough in how it decided to do that. Um, bringing Riley's character, who, you know, I heard Riley was doing this, and I've been dying to work with her for so long. <laughs> um, 
we've, uh, you know, we've lapsed each other, lipsed each other in a lot of circles, and it was just time to close that and make our own little circle. Um, but when I was talking with Quinn and Samir, even before I'd seen much more than the pilot in the second episode, uh, they were so thoughtful in a way that I had just gone through the ringer with and felt really, um, really compelled by, and that it's a modern story, that it's one that is so, so seminal to a lot of policy change recently uh, where it happened. You know, we have to have conversations about how we change large systems that enable crimes like this to happen. And this, that's what the show was very careful about doing, um, about bringing the voices of the family and what their experience was with the media, which I feel like Riley's character in bringing Rebecca into the narrative herself as the woman writing about this. Um, that's a wonderful way to self-indict the sensationalism that often happens with true crime journalism, with writing these books when somebody's career blows up because of another family or somebody's tragedy. Um, and then Cam, I was really curious about having the conversation of the law enforcement side of that. Um, how, because in the, the, the other um, source material that was optioned came from Manjeet Burke, Rena's father, and talked very, um, like, I guess explicitly, very in detail about what their experience as a family was, the racism that they felt coming from the police and coming from the media, the way it, uh, they didn't take it seriously at first, the way the whole trial just um, overwhelmed them with the, the, the fascination people had with it, and ultimately how Rena kind of got in that whole swell dehumanized all over again in that process. So I really liked that everybody had a very strong sense of correcting that and um, ultimately centering the narrative on Rena, on her family, on um, you know the the beautiful and very human things about them that made this a tragedy, and um, also the really broad impact that it had. So. Quinn, I have to say it's an extraordinary accomplishment what you've done here. Um, not only tackling, adapting some, a very personal book um, written by Rebecca Godfrey, um, but also collaborating with her. And then, you know, so sadly, she passed away before the show could be made. Um, but talk to us about coming to the story and working with Rebecca on how to tell her, her story. It's interesting because. Um, Rebecca herself had said in an interview like back in the 90s when she was working on this book that she had never been interested in writing about crime but she was interested in writing and she was interested in this crime and she had sort of stumbled into this story back when she was the age that I am now um, totally by accident she was working on a fiction book at the time like her first novel and she met the kids who had been involved in the crime like completely on accident and I think in some interesting ways like I kind of stumbled into this story in the same way like um, one of our executive producers Tara Duncan brought me the book because I had written a script a fictional script that had like a lot of really similar themes and she was like oh this this made me think of you and I read the book and I was so struck by it because I normally I think for sort of the same reasons that Lily expressed like I think I had always felt a little bit of an aversion towards the concept of working on a true crime because I think the the instinct is that it's gonna be something that's like very violent or very exploitive. And the book really struck me because it's such an ensemble. There's such fascinating characters in it. The characters are so young. Like the, the kids involved in this crime were middle schoolers. So that was like just something I had really never seen before. And the book itself was written with like so much poetry and like it was very clearly personal even though Rebecca didn't make herself a character in the book. And then when I started reading about her own past in the town, like she had grown up in the town where this happened, she had had a, a tragedy as a kid when she was there and that had sort of shaped her own interest in writing about troubled youth and she herself was like a real rebel and a punk when she was 13, 14, 15 there and really like related to some of the kids. I just honestly, I found it really interesting and kind of like a very human way in. 
And um, so yeah, I, I got to meet her uh, pretty soon after I, I came on board with the show. And we spent almost three years working together. Um, I got to know her really well. I like moved to upstate New York so I could like be by her while I was developing the pilot. And it was it was really interesting though because part of making her a character in the show was about removing ourselves from her perspective as the answer to what had happened or who we should sympathize with in the story. Like I think I was very aware that the book, like the more I got to know her, the more I realized that she is a character because her own perspective shapes the book. And so the book is beautiful, but it's also one way of looking at the crime. And so part of having you know Riley playing her in it was that we got to explore how she felt about the crime, but also how other people felt very differently about it. And yeah, I mean, getting to know her, it was a very interesting experience to, to talk to somebody who, she had worked on this for seven years and like went quite deep in. I mean, she was like inseparably close with some of the people who were involved and, and like you kept in touch with them for, you know, with one of the characters for over 20 years. And I saw how much it had shaped like everything in her life, her experience on this. And I think in some ways I was like, okay, I'm gonna get in, I'm gonna get into this kind of dark place with you and, and go on this journey. And she was very generous with, what she shared with me, yeah. It is so important with something like this to show an even-handed approach, and so I really love how you built out Cam's side of things and Rebecca's side of things, um, and even Cam's father's side of things. It tells like a very full story of some very difficult to understand crime, um, and I really loved how you all handled that. Um, Samia, you've worked on some amazing shows before. Um, one of my favorites, Tell Me Lies, and Little Fires Everywhere. And um, tell us about, yeah, applause. Uh, tell us about your um, feelings going into this and how you knew it was going to really be a great series and, and kind of the collaborative process. Just speak to that if you can. Yeah. Um, I'm in very similar, uh, very similar boat where. I did not immediately want to do a true crime story. Um, I had done a couple before and I, I had some ambivalence about just wading into that territory again. Um, but then I read Quinn's script, we first talked, and yeah, the beginning conversations were really like a, a, just a very quick, um, I think, sort of gut check to see, do we want to do the same thing? Do we want to tell the same kind of story? And is there a reason to do this if we're going to do it? Um, do another true crime show, do another murder mystery show. Is this purposeful? Is this intentional? Um, and it's funny, the first, the first day I remember we talked about, uh, surprisingly, black holes. Um, and <laughs> to the point where we were like, should we start this show in space? <laughs> um, the reason being, um, I, asked, I remember asking Quinn on day one, I said, okay, so if this show is ultimately meant to be one about radical empathy, we have to be able to access that level of empathy when we don't want to. Because if it's easy, if it's someone you already like, you're actually not actually engaging in that practice. So the question was, what role does psychopathy have? You know, it's something that's here the level of evil on display in this show is amongst us. Um, we can not like that that's true, but it's still here. So the question becomes, what do we do with it? How do we integrate it? How do we keep ourselves safe from it, but also sort of look it in the eye and deal with it? Um, so we talked about black holes because, you know, black holes are this sort of like unrelenting pit that only takes, doesn't give, it kind of has no purpose, but we don't necessarily hate it. We sort of approach it with a sense of mystery. Like, what is this thing? Why is it here? Why does it seem to <laughs> consume all light? And um, we stay away from it, but we still sort of have an appetite to understand it, um, which I think is important if we as a collective are meant to grow in any way and prevent crimes like this from happening. Um, so the beginning was largely a quest to do that and not just sensationalize the violence, as we've been saying. I, do, I thought about this show so much after I finished it, precisely because of what you said. You know, it's very hard as a human to understand that there are people who genuinely are psychopaths or sociopaths. 
and they walk among us, you know? And how are you supposed to think about that? But Rebecca's take is, you're not, what, you're not the worst thing you've ever done. She's always looking for the redemption in people, and it's about finding that line between the irredeemable and the redeemable. Um, Lily, I'd love to hear more about your experience of working with Riley as well, because the scenes with the two of you are just crackling, and there's all this story between you, and then there's the uh, people that play the younger you, and I'd love to hear about building that whole relationship. I feel like it was pretty quick and effortless, maybe because Riley and I have had just a professional awareness of each other and appreciation for each other's work for so long, but we never ha actually got to meet in person until we were making this show. Just, you know, likes back and forth on Instagram. She called me for advice about people to reach out to for, for War Pony when she was making that. So we've had just kind of a, you know, hey, what's up? I like what you're doing for a long time. And then getting to, I'm getting to parse through these um, kind of difficult conversations that we both like to have in the work that we do. And um, getting to in some ways be antithesis of uh, one another and have a really well-rounded conversation by playing these two characters with two very different opinions about one character in particular that um, really uh, is the seed of a lot of conversation that we want to have as human beings and as artists. This idea of, um, of radical empathy, this idea, this, I mean, so much in this story and in the aftermath of it and stuff that we can't even begin to touch on even in eight episodes but has a really big cultural impact touching into themes of um, this this elusive but very necessary concept and conversation around restorative justice and um, being in a landscape where that conversation very much happens and is led by indigenous people. Um, it's something that Riley is aware of and wants to support. And I just have, um, I have so much respect for her and the characters she's willing to take, the kind of hits she's willing to take to have these conversations, to really leverage her, her own privilege and her own position in society to have these necessary dialogues and to do so in an artistic way that we can all access and kind of draw ourselves into that too. Um, so yeah, working with Riley is, I mean, she's fun, she's committed. God, nobody's more committed than her <laughs> to, um, yeah, to just put it all up there and to have these moments and she's so, in, it's easy to build chemistry quickly with somebody who's generous. Because um, if you're generous with your character, with your time in a scene together, there was no sense of like, there was no sense of anything else in our scenes together except for each other. And we had conversations, of course, about what the relationship was. You know, Quinn really flushed all of that out for us. We both knew in a meta sense what our characters more represented when we're talking about the, the grand, um, I guess, allegories that could be made and found in this show. So, yeah, we just, we get on. We like each other. Um, I was really curious about, um, I don't want to spoil it for people, but there's a twist at the end with what Cam's origin story is, and uh, it involves um, an adoption story, and I just wanted to know um, how, whether you guys all collaborated on how to present that, and how you came to those decisions. I knew immediately, and it was all, actually that was one of the things that uh, warmed me to Quinn and Samir so quickly is they were aware of this systemic government program in Canada and similar one in the US. Um, the United States, just you know, to kind of not spoil anything about the show, but the United States has a policy, the Indian Child Welfare Act, to prevent things like what happens to my character and what she learns. You know from the get-go that she's adopted into this cop family. And I really liked that Cam was made a cop by circumstance of her, of her upbringing, and then unpacking what the origins of her, um, of her are, um, the way that she starts seeing herself in not just Rena, 
uh, the way she's haunted by some of the things she recognizes of herself in Rena, but in some of the other girls. Um, of uh, yeah, so there's a <laughs> there's a lot of unpacking there, and it points to this huge epidemic that happened in Canada through the 1960s all the way into the late 80s still happens in maybe not an official government push or program, but the legacy of it um, that divides Native families from each other is still very much um, in effect in Canada and the United States. Um, the young actress who plays the young version of me in this show and my niece in my next film, <laughs> go figure, Mm -hmm. I mean, I showed these guys the sizzle reel for Fancy Dance, and they cast her immediately as They're like, immediate, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, duh, we're not going to find anybody. You say your, your next film, you're talking about Fancy, fancy dance, dance, which, of course, you know I love yes. and uh, have always been a fan of. And mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. That's yeah, great. so Isabel is playing young Cam in this. Um, Isabel's own family, they, her father went through this. Her father had a very similar story to Cam. Um, but I'm really lovely homecoming and full circle moment. It's uh, their, their family story to share, but it's, um, yeah, without spoiling her arc exactly, you know from the first episode that she's indigenous, being raised in a non-indigenous cop family. I would love to know how you guys found the kids because those actors are just another level. How did you do that? Well, Julie Schubert, casting director, is incredible, but uh, <laughs> a, a relentless search, scouring the planet for yeah. the very best. And you know, obviously, like at, at some point, the instinct is to sh um, to cast you know eighteen plus who could play kids, um, but we just we just really did not want to do that. We think that the the, se the severity of the crime is really apparent when you realized just how young these kids were when they did this. And it was important that we um, lean into that authenticity. Um, and yeah, you just, I mean, you can just, you can tell when you watch it, like it's just so much better that we, we really waited it out and, and made sure we found like the, the best uh, true to age kids we could. They were 14 in real life, right? Tika, who plays Rena, was, was 12 when we started. She turned 12 while we were filming. I think 13. I think she turned 13. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> Still. It is, it's crazy, because I don't think anyone who watches the show realizes how young she is, because she kind of transformed so much in the role. And um, yeah, I mean, we really, we were really committed. I remember when we went into casting, we were like, no experience needed. Like, well, we were like, they had flyers in high schools. We were like, really? And I think Julie Schubert saw almost 700 girls for Arena. Um, and we like worked, you know, we workshopped with a bunch of girls. And, and when we met Tika on Zoom, I, originally, I think she, might not have even made it to us because she was so young that yeah. they were worried she'd be too young for the role. And, and then, then I'm, I'm glad we locked her in because then we had to catch the <laughs> other kids true to age. Yeah. Like, sorry, we can't do 18 plus. Yeah, I, I, I've never been more inspired. I mean, the whole cast of this show is so incredible. Getting to getting like to direct Lily and Riley in scenes, but then also getting to direct this ensemble of like very young kids. It was just like. I was a dream and I felt like we were so lucky to have them because I don't know, working with, with teens is like one of my biggest passions as a filmmaker and like working with this group was, uh, the work that they do in the show is incredible. I, I'm, we could not have had this show without them. Well, I just want to congratulate you on making a show that I still think about constantly and it really got in my head. It's so thought provoking, so well made. I urge everyone here to watch it. Under the bridge, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.